As the Farfarer made its way toward the Nexus, Renardo watched sparks fly out of the core. The Ibla Stone sucked them in hungrily. You'd think the stone would want this kind of power, wouldn't it? Thought Renardo. Well, the scientists would explain it all. This time, Renardo was sure he'd figured out how to use the core safely. He'd trusted his gut, and it had worked out. That's what it meant to be a hero, to ignore the naysayers and the odd makers, and do what you knew was right, and have it turn out to be the right thing. Well, he wasn't worried. Once he got to the observatory, the scientist toads could explain it. Then he could carry the war into the enemy's camp and destroy them all. <laughs> oh dear, he was getting a little bloodthirsty, wasn't he? Sort of yanking his own shape, wasn't he? Renardo had never felt better in his life. Normally, a battle would wear him down and he would need a night's sleep. Now he felt like he could go all night and all day. He felt like people were cheering him on and he could practically hear their applause as he slew one raven after another. The Imperial fleet was closing in on the rebels, forcing them to come out and fight. Renato was itching to bring the fight to the enemy. He had to remind himself not to be too reckless. time.
The toads at the observatory measured the stone with their occult devices. I fed it the core of Sky Ripper, explained Renato. No more Phoebe Pallant souls. But the core is not an unlimited energy source, said one toad. Another said, there's a feedback loop, you see, which could overload the stone. If the stone doesn't actually feed on souls, claimed the third, but on pain of killing another sentient being. If you can truly be at peace with yourself, it would not overload. This was all very confusing. At peace? Yes, the mountains were peaceful and quiet, but he now had the power to turn the tides. He should report to the Rebellion Council and prepare for the decisive battle.